Hi, I'm Bert. And I'm Milton. Welcome to Wild African Experience. Right, folks, before we start our episode, do not forget to subscribe and like our episodes. It helps us climb up the YouTube ladder so that it's easy for us to reach more people. Right. All right. So, Milton, today... Well, today we're going to talk about a very interesting animal, mm. and uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's a hyena. And uh, that's, we call it, they, they, of course, there they're, they're are so many types of mm. hyenas which you can get. Mm. We, we particularly are going to talk about uh, the most common, that is known as a spotted hyena, yes. uh, which others, they call it uh, a, a krukuta krukuta, which yeah. is and that means something that wanders, because of the spots they have, irregular spots they have. They were given the name spotted hyena. Wow. Apart from that, we have the brown hyena. Mm -hmm. We have what the striped hyena, very mm -hmm. common in East Africa mm -hmm. and in other Asian parts. Mm -hmm. And we also have Adwolf. It's also, part of, the, the, it's also the part of the hyena, which is quite interesting because it doesn't eat any of the stuff Insect, that the other hyenas. An in, 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 insectivore. Yeah, Insect. that's the word. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, look, hyenas are pretty. Well, personally, they are one of my favorites. Even though uh, there's some some people, just by looking at a hyena before you explain anything to them, they, they, they don't like it. And I, it always made me wonder why. And then I watched The Lion King. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, no wonder why hyena is the most hated. But now we're going to set the record straight how important they are to our ecological system. If you find a hyena... In, in an ecosystem, it shows that it's one of the healthiest because it means things are actually dying and they're being consumed. Mm. So nothing is going to waste. But I'll let you take it first and then we'll just... Um... Great. So they, they, they also call it nature sanitary engineer. Yes. And uh, <laughs> they, they can tack whatever they can bump into. Mm. But um, when it comes to scavenging, they can scavenge mm -hmm. and they can also hunt. Mm. Very successful hunters as compared to the lions. Mm. Why? Because they, they, they can pursue, they can have that endurance mm. where they can run like six kilometers an hour for over like six kilometers, mm. just mm. maintain the same speed, mm. trying to hunt. Yes. And if they eat, they will try and clear everything. Mm. And this is the only animal that can digest the bone. Mm. So when it feeds, it will make sure that it clears the bone. All right? Yes. It's not going to put it into waste. And when it goes and scavenge, it will make sure that it clears the bone, the skin and everything and it mm, some mm. um, lovely digestive uh, digestive juices mm, mm. that that helps to to digest the bone and and and, and, and some of the hair. Part. Wow. So by doing so it's 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 um, it's something that helps in the uh, ecological um uh, having an ecological value because mm. when when they get that that bone they've got a high content of calcium which mm. they which they tack and then they, mm. they also extract, mm. extract. Mm. Mm. And then that will help other animals uh, which are not able to have the, the calcium. Mm. Uh, like the leopard tortoise, leopard tortoise famous uh, for, for eating the, the um, scats of a, of a right. hyena. So the yeah. same osteophagy mm. Uh, mm. Um, a phenomenon. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Uh, and, and, and you find that they also clear a lot of diseases doing that. Mm. Uh, a lot of giraffes are famous for dying from diseases like botulism, from, right. from picking up... Um, carcasses and bones that are anthrax. infected, mm -hmm. anthrax as well, and hyenas make sure that that is keep, kept at a, at a minimal. Mm. So, so you find that there, nothing goes to waste. I mean, but imagine the, the jaw that can, that can break a, a bone like that, you know? That, that's something pretty interesting. It's, it's very strong, yeah. Very strong. Which is something that I, I actually, as much as they say it's strong, and I would like to say this in front of the camera because... I was camping the one night and I, I, I slept outside and, and I, I had guests and, and we were just, you know, having some drinks and then I, I decided to go on my, on my, um, in my swag. I'm lying down. Next thing you know, in the middle of the night, I'm fast asleep. I wear glasses so I don't see quite well, obviously, in the dark. Something hit me on the head, you know? Yeah. And um, I woke up. <laughs> So it was still blurry, so I took my glasses from the chair that was next to me where I put all my stuff, mm. and I put on. And this hyena is coming for the second time, you know? Because mm. as far as I have studied, a hyena, a hyena has got such a jaw strength that it can probably pop your skull and mesh it at the same time. Yeah, so I must have quite a 
hard hair, Dave. I only had like little scars here in the front mm -hmm. and I had longer hair then. And, and uh, yeah, geez, I started chasing the thing around camp, eh? <laughs> that's, that's something. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, it's, it's an animal that uh, can entertain you when you're in the camp. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's something which a lot of people, if they see, they're not going to run. I remember when I was uh, camping in Okavango Delta, mm. uh, we were in a situation that was very, uh, uh, it, can, it could be dangerous mm. because mm. We, had, um, we had an elephant bull, mm. okay? So everyone, you know, you know how you walk, you just say, in, in Botswana, in some of the countries, we don't take, you know, they're not allowed to, to get rifles and walk. Mm. So while we, we, we were just looking at uh, get, getting some, taking some photos, I'm, I'm just giving some, some signs to my guests that mm. photos, photos. And then same time, the hyena pops out and everyone's like, tent. And then, you know, they, they shouted. And at the same time, the elephant turned back and said, What's going on? And she had checked. And the hyena just looked at us, you know, and uh, I just quickly. We all stood up and then moved towards the hyena. So it's something where, to humans, you know, it's, it's not going to react like what lions do. If it's, <laughs> if it's a lion on a campsite, definitely a lot of people, they will, have, they will, they will run. Yeah. But a hyena, it can assess the situation and then it can just keep on coming, and, but it won't just, just attack to <laughs> humans. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you know, there's, uh, in Africa, there's a lot of myth, you know, uh, when it comes to hyenas, they're used in... in, in, in um, bad stuff you know witchcraft and mm. it, but you know it's something that uh, you just need to understand that when you start seeing a hyena in an area it actually shows a change in in stuff so like in i remember camping the one time and um, i'm busy talking with my guests and we could hear these hyenas calling and the next thing this hyena came from under the vehicle took the whole black bag you know mm. and my guests just in a casual manner i was like oh the hyena took the bin and i'm like what so I, start, I, I got up and I start chasing yes, this, this hyena. And I'm like, yeah, it, it has to drop the bag. And they, right. I came back to them like, yeah, you could have just uh, let it go with the bag. And I say to them, do you know how much work we had to do in the morning picking up all the trash? Because oh, that would mess up the whole system, right? Yeah. So yeah, there can be a nuisance in some campsites. But um, to be honest, they are, are pretty interesting um, animals but when we come back maybe we can talk about their um, anatomy it's something quite interesting that we, we can um, show tell the, the people as well welcome back so now we're gonna talk about uh, the way they live generally uh, hyenas they are um, uh, we call them matriarchals mm. meaning that they are led by females i would say we are also led by females yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, the, the females, they've got their highest rank when it comes to, you know, the way they live and to when the sound is coming because they, they've got that, uh, that call they make. Mm. And when the sound yeah. is coming from a female, mm. all of them, they'll listen. When the sound is coming from males, like, Ooh, you know, they, they don't concentrate. They'll just, you know, mm. keep on doing whatever they're doing. Yes. And then when it's female, they'll all pay attention. Mm. Because the female, she is the one in charge of the group. And usually, when it comes to uh, the difference between the two, males, they are smaller. When mm. it comes to mm. uh, the sizes, and females, they are a little bigger. Mm. Because hyenas, they do possess both male and female uh, um, genitalia. Uh, genitalia, which is uh, quite interesting. Mm. So, in a, on, on a den, uh, you would find that um, uh, the, the youngest you know, female in the group who have some powers uh, more than any male which is around. Mm, it's mm. very interesting. That's that's very interesting. And one thing which I've 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 I've, uh, I've heard that um, when 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 cubs when when those when when hyenas are born, mm -hmm. uh, if they are two young ones, mm. if they are all females, one female will eventually die mm. because of competition. Mm. But if there is a male and a female. Uh, the female will, will automatically overpower the male, mm. so they they will survive. Yeah, no, it's 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 very interesting. If you look at hyenas now, that we're talking about the matriarch matriarchal society and the fact that um, uh, the female has got the same uh, genitalia as the male. That's right. So I've always wondered how it works, and I started looking into it and studying it. Then you start realizing that. Uh, the females actually go through the worst when it comes to giving mm. birth because of, of their pseudogenital that looks like the males mm. and it has to split open. That there's a term that uh, scientists have, uh, have coined dystocia, mm. where uh, the male, the female can actually die 
in the process of, of giving birth, which is something uh, very scary, eh? Very scary. Mm. So the first time females giving birth, and usually they give a stillbirth because mm. of that, because mm. the umbilical cord, it does break, disjoint while it's still in the womb. Wow. And it's something because where uh, the, the birth canal mm -hmm. of the female, it's smaller than the head. Mm. So it takes time. So the first time uh, females giving birth, the, it, the, 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 the young one who eventually died because of lack of oxygen, wow. it'll get suffocated. So it's, it's quite sad that um, uh, seeing all these young hyenas around, um, the mother will have to go through um, some very difficult uh, times. Wow. And uh, because when they give birth, they would go back on a den and uh, they're totally different to the lions where lions, they go, they, they'll go and eat and uh, like wild dogs and give the pre-masculated, regurgitated food. Mm. But in, in, in the hyenas, hyenas, they will eat almost everything because they want to try and avoid competition. Mm -hmm. So by doing so, it makes, it's, an, it's one of the uh, predators that have a very rich milk as compared to all mm. the other carnivores because it makes sure that it grabs everything and come back and give the food, mm. uh, uh, milk to, to the young ones mm. which are mm. left at the den. Wow. You know? So at the den, you have little different um, compartments mm. in which they use the young ones to um, as, as an escape route. Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah, so so interesting, and yeah, because obviously, if 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 uh, uh, lions find the baby hyenas or even some other uh, packs of hyenas, they will obviously tear the whole um, uh, den apart. That's right. Yeah, so it's to avoid competition. Competition, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's um, interspecific competition. Mm. They mm. they will just want to try and eliminate the competition of hunting. So um, just just when, when they hunt in areas where I've seen more hyenas than lions. Um, like uh, like Liua Park. So hyenas in that area, they do more hunting as compared to scavenging. Oh, yeah. Scavenging. Mm. And then lions, they will scavenge more as compared to hunting. Mm. Mm. And in the areas where lions are more, hyenas, they will scavenge a little, uh, more than hunting. But nothing will stop them to, to, to do that. And mm. when it comes to fighting, the more hyenas they are in and big, they outrun the lions or have more numbers when it comes to the numbers where they are, mm. they can fight a lion mm -hmm. and uh, they will end up winning and taking the food. And then it's compared to lions, when they are plenty as old, they'll do the same. Yeah. And one thing I, I, I've, I've realized, I don't know if you heard that brown hyenas, they have a tendency of getting a big chunk and then they'll go and eat somewhere without mm. getting disturbed. Mm -hmm. But uh, spotted hyenas, they love to eat right on the spot. Right on the spot, which yeah. Is, um, mm. something else. Yeah. Yeah, even though occasionally you will find maybe one uh, juvenile just picking it up and running, which which uh, which which you you find that you know the way they are built. Some people, if they don't know what's happening, they'll be like, it's so built weirdly, you know. Mm. It's got a head like so big. The the mouth is wide, blunt teeth, strong, mm -hmm. muscular neck, mm -hmm. and a sloppy back and 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 the the, the back legs are sort of much shorter yeah than shorter and they walk sideways you know that's right that means uh, it's made possible for for like uh, stamina mm. and uh, is all uh, running for distances mm -hmm. that's why they can pursue they can run for long distance maintain the same speed mm -hmm. when they're hunting and at the same time they're able to grab a piece of a meat you know from a live from animal a, whilst live it's animal even running. <laughs> running and then they can take it off mm. which is uh, something else so that's that is why they have such a, uh, a shape wow which is, uh, which is something else yeah talk about efficiency yeah, they're so efficient so even by the time the lions come to say well to claim their big share of whatever has been killed say at sesame or a kudu mm -hmm. you find that hyenas some of them have already tore down some parts of the meat and they've been eating whilst they are on the go, mm. which is something that you always find uh, fascinating about them. Uh, they are so efficient, you know? Very efficient mm. by grabbing almost everything they can get. And uh, yeah, since there will be plenty, they don't really mind, you know, like getting to lions where they would want to start getting rich, you know, some insides and mm. hyenas will start to grab and split it and then eat and keep on eating until the un, until the, the whole carcass is complete. Yeah. And uh, and it's it's an animal that that is with a very good sense of uh, olfactory. You know the mm. that that communication they they do um, through chemical senses. Mm -hmm. So if an animal is passed through the scent, even three days, mm. a hyena can still detect it, which is um, something very very 
unique. Wow. They really other animals. So they are uh, all factory senses. Um, they, they, they're totally different to some of the predators. Mm, mm. So, That's pretty interesting, eh? So yeah, now when we come back, we're going to talk about places that you can find hyenas. Yeah. yeah, the distribution of hyenas in and around Zimbabwe. All right, stay tuned. All right. Welcome back. So when it comes to distribution, mm. uh, these hyenas, you can literally get them almost everywhere throughout Africa, mm -hmm. uh, where there's a uh, big gam, you know, think of uh, um, Manapus, think of uh, Gona Rejol, uh, think of Wangi National Park. And uh, recently, you know, last time you were talking of uh, Great Migration in East Africa, mm -hmm. you think of, um, oh, yeah. you Jeez. know, all hyenas and everything there, you mm. know, just getting um, 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 kind, kind of lo quite a lot of food. Yeah, I drove past uh, Robin's Camp, Matetsi area. I found a lot of them just mm. lying under the tree like that, mm. you know. It, it's something quite interesting. And yeah. also Kruger National Park, close to Pretoria, Skop. That's right. Yeah, they're almost, they're, they're almost everywhere. Mm. <laughs> everywhere you, there's food. Usually, <laughs> you're not, um, they, they don't usually mix up the brown hyena. It prefers in areas where spotted hyenas they're not going to be. Mm. And uh, there are some parks. We, which they will have only brown hyenas, no mm -hmm. spotted hyenas. Mm. I, I've worked in some, some such park. Mm. And then, uh, and the ad wolf, the animal that a lot of field guys would love to, 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 to film and take a picture of that mm. thing. Mm. It's, it's not something which is very, uh, very common, but in area where you get some uh, lovely terrain, big Temak mounds, it's, you, you, also, you always get there. But striped hyenas in East Africa, I've, talked, I've seen them a lot in Tarangiri National mm. Park which is um, which is it's very common there mm, mm. but throughout africa you can still get um, uh, hyenas around yes uh, no it's quite amazing eh? so that was our hyena episode and once again do not forget to subscribe and like our episodes so that we can have a more bigger outreach so until next time my name is bert and i'm milton thank you so much for watching wild africa experience